<laughs> Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, is that two? And does that work like? Okay. Cool. Uh, my name is Heida, and I'm here because Guðrún was supposed to be here, but she unfortunately couldn't be here. She got sick, and uh, so I'm standing in it. I hope I will do a good job of telling you what she wanted to tell you before. Uh, I'm from Parity. Uh, Parity, uh, Parity, we are using our cultural heritage to create our virtual fantasy world. Uh, I came into Parity uh, and the first team member coming into Parity after Mario founded the company. And uh, my background is not in uh, cultural heritage, folklore, or anything like that. I'm an artist, I'm a biologist, uh, and I'm an ex-police officer. So I have totally different background than you. Uh, but we are founded, yeah. Uh, our uh, goal, Maria founded part of the same team with the uh, specific goal of making uh, telling stories from women. Uh, and we, she wanted to appeal to a broader audience in a medium that is pretty general but has did have pretty, in our opinion, narrow focus on, you know, storytelling. Uh, employing diverse teams with diverse backgrounds was also the uh, major goal. Hence, I'm there and Guðrún with totally different backgrounds and a lot of other people. Uh, and our first game being developed now is Island of Winds. And this is our heroine from Island of Winds. Uh, this is Brynhildur in her, her uh, world, a world that mirrors Iceland, but is not exactly Iceland. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the game and about, you know, individual steps in making the game as we want to make it to not tell the exact story of our Icelandic heritage, but mirroring it in a way with our dash of fantasy and, and, and uh, yeah. Uh, yes, as I said before, we wanted to tell stories about the women and we also wanted to uh, being, uh, sorry, uh, we also wanted to, I was up all night thinking about the lecture, so I'm not having time to laugh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, we wanted to, uh, uh, we were, when I started with Maria, on thinking about what we were going to do for the game. Uh, uh, we wanted to tell stories of women, <coughs> new stories that are being told, but we also thought that, okay, we can do a lot of words that we, you know, are out there, but it's uh, the best practice when you're telling a story is to tell what you know. And then I said, we, we know Iceland, we know our story, and uh, we raised here and born here. And uh, so we decided we wanted to do a story based on Iceland. Icelandic history and culture. And also, we wanted to do something that hadn't been done a lot before. And uh, that ended up being not having Vikings in our story. Mm -hmm. Because that is a theme that has been used a lot, of course. It's, 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 uh, it's very popular. And uh, then we were led to our idea of Island of Twins. And uh, that is a story based in 17th, 18th century world mirrored by Iceland, Icelandic nature and uh, animal life. There is, that is where I come in as a biologist and a huge natural enthusiast. But then we are focusing on using uh, you know, architecture, uh, crops, uh, folk tales, uh, mythology and all of the uh, everything we can you know we basically looking for everything we can use because 
sometimes we feel like our history is a bit poor because we don't have grand buildings and stuff. But when we dive deeper and we have a lot of very unique stories, very unique, uh, like the turf houses, they are pretty unique things in Europe. And uh, so we are uh, emphasizing these, uh, these uh, themes in our game. And me and Guirum, we are very, very strict. And our, uh, when the IT is coming, that we are trying to have them based in this world that we want to, to represent, to be true to our uh, heritage, to our folklore, folk tales, but not exactly you know, uh, copying them. We are adding our 10-15% of fantasy on top, but it is all very decent and constrained. So sometimes uh, there is a one about the design, maybe you've seen, there are no trees here. Uh, we don't use trees, and that is not the cultural thing, but well, actually it is. Uh, uh, there are no trees in Iceland in this time, and that is because people you know, took them all away to burn them, to build from them, and use them. This happens in small islands where people come, and the trees are the first to go. Uh, the sheep have to eat them, the, the people have to, to, to heat up their houses and stuff. And uh, so we said, this is also a, a thing that defines our natural landscape. And it was pretty difficult sometimes for, because in many games, there are a lot of trees specially used for level design. Uh, but we can't use trees for level design, for deciding where the player goes. Uh, so we have been very strict on this. And a lot of other things, uh, having you know, things not in the game that were represented in this era. Uh, and, but you know, then when we break the rules, there is a specific reason. And sometimes just because we want it, without no, no reasons. Uh, as I was saying, yeah, this is something about this. Uh, we chose the 17th, 18th century mainly because uh, Maria was very interested in the magic and the, the Galtra Brenner, the, the magic fever in Iceland in this time. And mostly because there were many women that were hurt by that. And then we are celebrating art and crafts and magic. We have, we have real life objects in our game. I'm going to tell you about that later. Uh, and uh, we have little creatures and folk tales being retold as folk tales are. Uh, retold in our real world. We retell them again in the game. And here is the hero of the pop. This is the actual Alba Potter or Elf Pot. And this image is actually, this is not a real thing in the image, it's a virtual a pot in a virtual world. Um, this is, a, yeah, a parody is cooperating with the National History Museum and uh, the Natural History Museum is scanning uh, uh, its objects and uh, we are allowed to use some of them, including this pot, and this pot is already in our game. And it has a specific story, we'll tell you later. And to do, be able to do this means a lot to, to, to our team and our story, having real life objects in with their own history in a game that we can either you know, retell or you know, adjust the telling of is a huge thing for us. And uh, this Alva Potter is, just to tell you a little bit about its journey, it's from maybe 17th, 16th century. Uh, I, I'm not the expert in this, I'm retelling what the news said. So. But uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, it looks, it's, it's very appropriate now because we have Halloween and it looks like a witch's part. Has ears and everything. So uh, it was found in Birafjörður in the uh, uh, 19th century, I think, uh, by a man called Paul Gunnarsson. And uh, that man uh, told the story that he was walking on the beach one evening, 
And then he saw a group of people walking on the beach. And there was a child uh, following the group of people on the beach. And he said, then the child uh, he put something on the ground and ran after the people. And when he came to the beach, there was a, this pot lying on the shore. And then the people disappeared. And the reasoning was that these were elves and the elf baby that uh, lost its pot there. So he took the pot, kept it, and then another uh, inhabitant of the West Kurds took the pot, got the pot. And then the pot was donated to the National History Museum in Iceland. And uh, it was three discount, and now it is in our day, in a virtual world. So it come all the way from the elves to our island babies. So it's very appropriate because we also have elves. Uh, so the idea of having something like mythology, mythological in real life and in a virtual world and also in a mythical world, it's kind of like this pot is represented. It's actually from Elves, if you believe it, and has been in a, in a very academic machine, and then in our very fantastic world. So it's a very interesting perspective. Do you see it? Is it a little black? This is a. Yeah, okay. This thing This is a screenshot from in, with an album. And uh, as you see, or the pot is there by the fire. And uh, this is one of our houses. I can remember this, this uh, visiting there. And uh, we have many other, like in the back, look at the back there. Uh, <laughs> 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 the back of the, of the pot, we have the, a chest that is also uh, stand. And, uh, and this is a very, very tired fisherman. Having the pot. I don't know what he does with the pot, but having it there, I'm kind of thinking maybe not even from it. Um, uh, what we are going to do in our game, uh, our plan is to create our own in game machine with uh, uh, all the items that we are scanning in the game and also the creatures we are making in the game or uh, representations of. Fantastic, uh, the, the fictional mythological things, and uh, this is going to be an outdoor machine museum with walls made of rock, kind of like uh, the turf houses. Uh, and uh, when the player encounters or sees an item in the game, uh, the item appears in the machine, and the uh, uh, experience is supposed to be the same as going into a machine. Where you have tags, you have information, you have uh, uh, things to tell you and tell you more information about the specific object and even information outside the game. Because sometimes we have creatures that not, don't tell the story of Scott being uh, one of our mythological uh, beings exactly in the game. But in this museum, uh, as I understand it, it's supposed to be um, the exact information from all four four. And uh, so you can get a deeper understanding of, of all the creatures and assets. And this is the top view. This is created by Guru. She is the, the primary owner of this idea, Guru And this is her idea of how this will look. This is the top perspective. And uh, I think it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also still up. And uh, I, 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 this is probably the main thing I want to look at in the game. But I look at a, a lot of stuff in the game Not this, it's not uh, made yet. So. But uh, yes, the plan is to have all the creatures uh, in the houses or uh, in props put in, the, in this museum. Um, And this is a mock up a screenshot from a design document how it could look. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just finishing. And uh, yes, so 
when you encounter this in uh, the Russian machine, you interact with it, and then you get the text out and stuff. So this is a very interesting idea. Here's a picture of Bjarkirkungur. This is a sample of the possible tagging in the machine. Yeah, and then I was going to talk a bit about this, but I'm going to go very quick on this. Is to, just to celebrate our cultural heritage of the authentic crafts in our game. And uh, as you see, Reynadur is basically wearing a design of the, based on the authentic Kalkunigur. And I had, I am responsible for this massacre of the Icelandic national costume, costume mm -hmm. and uh, I will take all the blame. But uh, actually, first we wanted to have, and we have told the story a lot, we like telling it. And that we want to use the culture we have, that sometimes is it's not possible. Because now, in 2023, we still have a problem having long skirts in games. <laughs> I don't know why, because we can do mostly everything else. Talk about all the VR stuff and, and, and AI, but skirts in games, no, that's too difficult. So I had to redesign costume and make it like yeah, that was okay. Um, and then talking about uh, user experience and user interface, uh, something we did a good bit in our game. She designed all the UI and the user interface. It's all based on stitch work from Icelandic. Valtteringar, Gjortusjöver, what you see on the costumes, like on the bottom, it's all women's hand, women's craftsmanship. And we are paying our tribute like this, uh, we do in our user interface. And Mokkuts, uh, hat screens, and you know, you see, you can see the science around the, uh, this is so starting, it's all based on the, what you see on the national costume. And uh, I think it's one of the best UIs I have seen in a game. I play a lot of games. And uh, I think Gurm has made a pretty new way of uh, interpreting. Because UI is usually the square and boring, in my opinion. It's just me. Uh, and then just a quick overview of some of the creatures. And talk about fantasy. Uh, actually, this creature is one of the creatures that breaks the rules. We are making our creatures based on mythological tales of beings, but no tale of this Havgoa in Iceland to do is talking about a mermaid or anything like this. This is just something I, I uh, took leave to do. And make different from the text, but it's still this Havgoa. Havgoa uh, is actually something that is probably bigger than the center of town, which in the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, just to see. So, and here is Guru. No, I was supposed to be here today. And uh, this is our team now. So, thank you.